uh, here in this one we see that the steady boundary layer we see that the steady boundary layer equations on the screen so whereas in the steady boundary layer case equation so here what we have taken is so here when we are talking about the steady boundary layer so when you are saying it is a steady boundary layer as far as initially you should be clear that so what exactly the boundary layer so initial assumption initially it is assumed that you are all clear observed what is the boundary layer is what is the boundary layer is what is the velocity profile what the boundary layer and we say that the boundary layer thickness is the the boundary layer thickness generally represented by the delta the boundary layer thickness is the thickness available on the solid surface it is the thickness available on the solid surface when the fluid moves when the fluid moves over the solid body and the fluid is viscous in nature and the fluid is viscous in nature when the viscous fluid when the viscous fluid is when the viscous fluid is allowed to move on the solid surface there is a thickness developed on the solid surface of the body that thickness that thickness is nothing but the boundary layer thickness that thickness is nothing but the boundary layer thickness so here we have considered a case of steady boundary layer here we have considered a steady boundary layer but as far as this boundary layer is concerned so you know what we are supposed to know is if the internally if the internally when we are talking about the velocity component when you are talking about the velocity component internally so when i take as an xy axis when we take on along the xy axis the velocity will be varying the velocity would be varying up to the certain height and after that certain height it is equivalent to the v infinity it is equivalent to the v infinity that is your free stream velocity that is your free stream velocity it will be raising up to the certain point so that means up to this height up to this height where the continuous variation of the velocity is available so that velocity we will call that velocity where it is being influenced by the boundary layer this velocity is being influenced by the boundary layer so here that is the reason we see at a point of x is at a point of y is equal to zero the velocity is zero and at the point y is equal to y is equal to delta so they are the v infinity is approximately equal to the u v infinity is approximately equal to the u in this one so that is exactly state that this is the boundary layer thickness formed when you are talking about the viscous fluid first. but here the case we are considering it here it is that is steady boundary layer we are considering a case of steady boundary layer in case of steady boundary layer how the fluid flow behaves in that one so that how can it is being related with respect to the parabolic equation that is what our interest in this one that is what our interest in this one now as far as this boundary layer is concerned as far as this boundary layer is concerned and with respect to the solid boundary with respect to the solid boundary we know that we know that inside the fluid so that is up to the thickness of the delta up to the thickness of the delta height the boundary layer is under the influence and and when you are talking about beyond this particular beyond this particular region so that means inside region it is completely viscous in nature inside region completely it is a viscous layer and outside it is outside it is completely in a inviscid region so why i am calling it as inviscid region again viscous and inviscid regions case whereas within the boundary layer whereas within the boundary layer the velocity is varying but above this layers above this layer so where v infinity that is the free stream velocity is approximately equal to my equal to the velocity of this particular flow so above that particular one where the fluid is behaving like an again inviscid flow so that means that is the importance of the boundary layer so here when whereas the example which we have taken it so that is up to the shaded region up to the shaded region the fluid is behaving like in a viscous fluid flow and beyond this particular one the fluid is behaving like an inviscid fluid flow inviscid fluid flow so that is what the initially we have considered was with respect to the boundary layer has been concerned inside this shaded region the fluid is viscous in nature and outside the fluid region that that is inviscid in nature so that is actually the actually the fluid flow is viscous only but here we are interested in talking about the with respect to the boundary layer with respect to the boundary layer so that means where the fluid is attached to the boundary so and where it forms a thickness of the boundary layer that layer we are calling it as boundary layer viscous flow and where the fluid is not attached to the solid boundary that region we are calling it as inviscid flow outside the boundary layer outside the boundary this is what the variation between the inside boundary layer and the outside boundary layer and if we are talking about the we are talking about the equation we are addressing it so here from the point p for example as with the previous example if you are continuing it as with the previous example if you are continuing with it so if you see from the point p onwards the flow is getting influenced after this region but in front of the region in front of this region there is no flow influence over this particular one so that is the best example for the parabolic flow problem that is a best example for the parabolic equation so that is stating that the fluid flow equations 
the fluid flow equations are now or the nature of the fluid flow here in this one is in a parabolic in nature so that is the reason we have taken this example under the steady boundary layer of a steady boundary layer of this particular one so that is a it might be on a shock wave or it may not be a shock wave but we are interested only about the boundary layer current we are interested only about the boundary layer current right so let us let us expand this region initially we have taken a small region in this one and that has been that has been the enlarged view is available in this one so whereas the enlarged view let us focus on this particular one in order to discuss more about what exactly the boundary layer flows is what exactly the boundary layer flows is so in order to discuss about that one so what we have done is we have just focused on this frontal region of the nose just we have focused on the frontal region of the nose and i have zoomed this particular one and zoomed it in the bottom side of this particular image right so that is the front region i have just taken it from the a to b when i am moving to the a to b so just i have zoomed this particular one so the portion which has been highlighted so that has been zoomed here in this one and i am capturing that particular reflectiveness i am studying it here again so as far as this flow is concerned as far as this flow is concerned so where the flow is coming with the velocity of infinity yes same velocity of flow infinity so that is just i am expanding i enlarged this view and here on this one if you see here on this one if you see so there i have made some notation so that and that uh, there we have been pointed with a point a and point b and here on the other side point e and f now the question comes why exactly you have pointed these two points or you have labeled this one a and b and e and f and as far as this geometry is been concerned as far as this geometry is concerned the geometry is symmetrical about the axis this geometry is symmetrical about the axis as we see in this image it is symmetrical about both the sides so now let me say let me discuss about only one side of this one so because the other side the flow characteristics are going to be same now in order to in order to capture this fx of the fluid flow in order to capture the fx of this fluid flow where p is the initial point where p is the initial point of the fluid flow and from which the fluid flow properties are being varied now the question comes how do i know the height of ab height now the next question comes sir how can we know the height of a and b how can we know the height of how can we know the height of a and b so in that case in order to know the height of a and b in order to know the height of a and b so one should be one should be very clear about one should be very clear about the boundary layer concepts one should be very clear about the boundary layer concepts so if you are clear about the boundary layer concepts if you are clear about the boundary layer concept so that means we can we can obtain obtain the height of a and b how it is varying from the initial point p to the ab so that means this that means the concept is involved with the respect to the boundary layer is talking about the boundary layer thickness how it is varying so that means at any instant i am taking this a and b so it may be this particular point of b and at this instant this is a so that means this is known to me as as my fluid influence in free stream velocity is known to me and i know about the solid boundary here in this one and i know about the fluid flow properties here. i know about the fluid flow properties here. right so when this is known to me when this is known to me so that means easily i can easily i can uh, so that means it is known to me what exactly the ab is what exactly the ab is so that is known to me so when that is known to us then when that is known to us so that means easily we can pictureize the effectiveness in between the ad ad and the cd how the fluid flow is varying inside this one so that means all the parabolic uh, cases the parabolic cases which is resulting in the fluid flow the parabolic cases which is resulting in the fluid flow is talking about the is talking about the fluid flow variation and that fluid flow variation when i'm taking it from the one source point is nothing but the boundary layer variation and that boundary layer when i'm considering it along the body around the body so that is giving me the actual solution of it so finally the conclusion comes yes the fluid flow problem is parabolic in nature finally we can conclude from this one is the fluid flow problem is parabolic in nature where the a and b is initially known and depending upon the length of this particular length of this particular geometry the ad is the solid boundary condition we are applying it and bc is the boundary condition which is adopted with respect to the boundary layer concept 
BC has been adopted with respect to this one, and the AD is solid boundary along this one. And at each and every instant, I can find out what is the boundary layer available on this one. So that is along this one. This can be known by noticing this one. So that means complete fluid problem can be addressed. So that is how. That is how when we are talking about the steady boundary layer thickness, steady boundary layer thickness, talking about in this particular fluid flow. Talking about in this particular fluid flows. Okay, so this is all about the schematics of the boundary layer where the fluid has been influenced on. So, so don't worry about the other side of this one. So the other side also is just the notations have been changed. So it will be having the same behavior on the even on to the other side as as the as the geometry is symmetrical about this axis. As the geometry is symmetrical about the axis, the wall boundary condition and the outer edge boundary conditions when you are applying it to this one. So that means the effective capture of this particular fluid flow can be taken very easily from your concepts of, from your fundamental concepts of the boundary layer theory, from the fundamental concepts of a, from the fundamental concepts of a boundary layer theory. Now the next question comes. Now the next question comes for how do we address this BC points? How do we address this BC point? So if you are clear about, if you are clear about the boundary layer theory. If you are clear about the boundary layer theory, what do we know along the length of L, along the length of L? For example, if you are taking along the X and the Y direction, if you are taking it along the X and Y direction, and when you see the boundary layer profile, initially it will be the zero velocity, and slowly the boundary increases, that is boundary layer increases, and after certain height, so it will go for the turbulence in that one. It will go for the turbulence in that one. So I, let me take it. Up to this region, the fluid is laminar, and beyond this region, the fluid is going for the transition. Transition zone, and this is a turbulent zone. This is turbulent zone, and this is laminar zone. This is laminar zone. Okay, so by knowing this particular zone, so that means your velocity of this one. So that is you can know what is the boundary layer thickness is being given. So that means at each instant that a b. So that means here at this point your b is known, and up to the laminar zone ending, up to the laminar zone ending. So you can know another point. So for let me write a dash and the b dash. So where up to this point, up to the laminar zone, I can by by predicting the fluid flow with respect to the laminar flow conditions, I can get this a dash and b dash. Now from a dash to from a dash to a double dash to b double dash. Here the zone is transition. So that means I have to apply the condition of transition boundary layer conditions. Then again resulted deviation. Then again turbulent. But here, if you see in this one, so it is completely the boundary layer thickness is being attached to the boundary. So let us consider that entire region if it is laminar, entire region if it is laminar. So that means the condition is available in between the A and A dash. If you are applying the laminar boundary conditions from your fluid mechanics, then the solution is known in your hand. So that means outer boundary layer. So that means where it is a condition where free stream velocity is approximately equal to U. This is the mathematical condition you all apply, and up to this, up to this, where the delta is varying, so that is known as boundary layer thickness. From the bottom of the solid surface to this point where it is varying, so that is your boundary layer thickness, and where it exactly equals, that is your outer boundary of this one. So that way, your BC can be known. Your BC can be known. AD is already defined. So BC can be known, and BC if it is known, so outside the fluid flow is always in this way nature. So that can be adopted. That can be adopted in this. Okay. So this is all about the steady boundary layer flow condition. Steady boundary layer flow condition. Now let us see. Let us see a parabolized viscous flow condition. A parabolized viscous flow condition. So now here in this one, see. Now the question is. Now the question is, what happens when the boundary layer is no thin? In the previous cases, we have considered a thin shock wave layer is attached to the body, and the entire flow field is attached to that particular body. And we have assumed in the previous case that it can be even, it can be even completely a laminar fluid flow within the boundary layer. Also, that was an assumption in the previous case. Now, in this case, let us go with the question like: So, what happens? What happens when your boundary layer is not so thin, indeed, indeed, and the entire flow field of interest is fully viscous? So that means here the no second layer thought, no second layer thought we are taking. So that means outside region and invisible outside region where it is invisible that is not of my interest now. That is not of my interest. 
right so if that is not my of interest so that means i am not worried about this particular condition even where what is happening exactly out outside this particular fluid flow so that means i am interested only from a point source p from a point source p i am interested only within the shock region within that means inside of the shock region how much is been the region being influenced on that so that means in my in this case in this case my equation have become very simple in this one so where So your mic is so that solution will be giving a completely of a completely of a parabolic equation. So where it is completely viscous in nature, completely viscous shock layer would be forming in that particular case, right? So here we see that the shock wave available inside the shock wave available inside. So this particular fluid flow will be varying like with respect to the boundary layer. This complete nature would be in the viscous in nature. This complete fluid flow would be in the Viscous in nature, so this is how the fluid flow variations will be happening. So as it is symmetric about the body, so this for this particular case to address it, so no need to even talk, talk about the outside one. But but whereas the shock wave is concerned, whereas the shock wave is concerned, so here on the shock wave itself we know the properties of it. So that means as far as the flow properties are being concerned, so it is varying within the shock region, within the shock region. So that means the region of influence from the point P is only inside the body. Is only inside the body, so that is totally viscous fluid flow. Totally viscous fluid flow that is. Okay, so that is totally viscous fluid flow. We have it in this particular case of parabolized parabolic equation, where the total viscous shock layer is of my interest. In that case, how do we add, approach to the problem? So this is what about the next case we have it in this. This is about the next case we have it here in this. Now, now another question comes. Now the question comes, sir. If you are talking about the completely viscous fluid flow, if you are talking about completely viscous fluid flow, if you are talking about the completely viscous fluid flows inside that particular geometry, if you are talking about that one, right? So then, in that case, in that case, how do we how do we address this particular equations which we have already written in the previous one? So how do we address that particular equation which we have already done in the previous cases, right? In order to address the equation which we have done it in the earlier earlier sessions. In the earlier videos, you can see so that whatever the whatever the previous derivations we have made for the momentum equation or the Navier-Stokes equation, momentum equation or the Navier-Stokes equation adopted in that one. So where it has been given, where it has been given from the Navier-Stokes equation, where the resultant terms are varying with the pressure terms, shear terms, viscous terms, and so that is the that's a pressure gradient. Pressure gradient here we see the pressure gradient terms. Right, and this is the flow variable where it is a local acceleration and the convective acceleration, pressure gradient terms. These are all the viscous terms are being addressed in that equation, and the gravity forces are being considered here in this one. Now, in this equation, so when you are stating that problem is being simplified now, if the problem is being simplified now, so if you are stating that within that particular fluid flow, within that particular fluid flow, if the no properties of the viscous are being influenced, if the no property of the viscous has been influenced in that one, how I can simplify my equation of the governing, how I can simplify the equation of the governing equations, which we have obtained earlier, which we have obtained earlier, how can I simplify this governing equation in order to obtain my solution for the only parabolized only for the parabolized conditions only for the parabolized condition so in that case in that case concentrate on the screen everyone concentrate on the screen in that case when you are equation when you are yourself are stating that if the fluid flow is invisible in nature or there is no or there is no viscous terms influencing on the particular fluid flow then my viscous terms can be equated to zero then my viscous terms can be equated to zero so where all my have my viscous terms where all I have my viscous terms, that terms can be equated to zero. When your viscous terms are being equated to zero, so that is lambda mu, mu is viscosity, lambda is viscosity, right? And if you are addressing these terms to zero, or if you are equating these terms to zero, then our resultant equation, then our resultant equation would be resultant. So what are the resultant equation we obtain after equating that all equating to zero? So that my resultant equation will be called as parabolized. That my resultant equation is known as a parabolized navier stokes equation that equation is known as the parabolized navier stokes equation 
so that is the that is the equation we have that is the equation we have when we are equating the terms of viscosity to zero so now let us do that one let us do that one then only we will understand so which all terms need to be equated to zero so i said that there is no viscous terms in the parabolic navier stokes so that is general navier stokes equation i brought it on screen now so the, in that general navier stokes equation i want to make it the viscous terms equal to zero yes this or this term also will go to zero and this term also will go to zero and even in this one this 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 will go to zero and this will go to zero this will go to zero this will go to zero right so where all i have my viscous terms that would be equal to zero that would be equated to zero right so if you if i have any viscous term multiplied with that one so that will also go to zero so let me check where all i have viscous terms in that one yes this is the here viscous terms i have here viscous terms i have here viscous terms i have here viscous terms here here so that is a conservative and near the conservative form of the energy equation i have brought it in this one and the momentum equation that is a navier stokes equation so when i when i equate these all terms to zero so that is now you may ask the question sir how can you directly equate it to zero or what is exactly this means in that one so what exactly i mean at this particular point is that i'd like to take that i'd like to state if my condition is such like in my equations in my equation if my condition if in the equation or the for the problem the condition is like the condition is like the viscosity terms are very less the viscosity terms are very less and and negligible effects are being given on that one when the negligible effects are being given on to that one so then my resultant equation then my resultant equation which is obtained then my resultant equation which is obtained so that it is known as the parabolized navier stokes equation then my resultant equation is known as the parabolized navier stokes equation so on screen you can see which all the terms have been cancelled which are the terms have been cancelled so that have been have a so that all terms have a negligible influence on the fluid flow so that means earlier sessions we have already derived these equations now in the derived equation i'm just i'm just equating those terms to zero I'm just equating those terms to zero in order to make my equation as very simple one in order to make my equation as very simple one so that gives me that gives me an, another solution resulting or that equations can be called as a parabolized that equations can be called as a parabolized navier stokes equation that equation can be called as a parabolized navier stokes equation so that is the resultant of my terms when you are equating into the viscosity terms are going to zero when our viscosity terms are going to zero so here on screen when you are cancelling these terms so here i have cancelled all the terms where it is being related with respect to the viscosity all it is being related with respect to the velocity when i'm equated it to zero that equation that equation terms now now so in that equation terms in that equation terms if you are if you are key that is if you are k so that means the resultant constant if it is also that is very negligible in your equation of the energy transfer if the energy constant is also very small then you can equate these terms also to zero then you can equate these terms also equal to zero then my resultant equation will be ended up with only this solution so when you are k so that is energy constant k is equal to zero so then in that my in that case my resultant equation will be simplified and that simplified equation can be called as only after simplification only you can call it as a parabolic parabolized navier stokes equation that can be called as parabolic navier stokes equation right so this is all about the parabolic navier stokes or the parabolized navier stokes equation we have done we have done right so now now let us see let us see into the next before going to the next topic so we just concentrate on this one so that is a parabolic navier stokes equation what are the terms we have neglected here in this one what are the terms we have neglected in this one after neglecting those terms only the obtained equation is known as the parabolic navier stokes 